Valve remains quiet, no surprise there, but a number of things have happened or have been discovered over the last few weeks to suggest that CSGO could be getting a big update very soon. Now we're hoping this will be some kind of rebranded Source 2 overhaul. Source 2's biggest problem is itself. You only have to read through Half-Life Alex: The Final Hours to know its incomplete state was at least partially responsible for killing projects like Left 4 Dead 3 and new attempts to make a Half-Life game. With that being said, in 2015 Dota 2 moved over to the Source 2 engine, although I think the impact this had on the players of that game was probably less than you might have expected. But in 2020, almost three years ago now, Source 2 proved itself finished enough to handle a modern new game, with that game being Half-Life Alex. The question now is, what has Valve been working on since? Does it involve CSGO? And will it look nice? On February the 27th, Valve changed their Twitter account's banner picture. I made a whole video covering this exciting revelation and why people thought it could mean something, which you can check out in this video's cards. On March the 1st, and exactly a month before April the 1st, Gabe Follower on Twitter pointed out that the latest Nvidia drivers introduced support for unknown apps, called CSGO S2 and CS2. If you own an Nvidia graphics card, you can see this for yourself by going to the control panel and by doing this. Sandwiched between Costume Quest and Crab Game, you'll find all the Counter-Strike games listed, including the fairly new editions of CSGO Source 2 and Counter-Strike 2. Check out Gabe Follower's video about it, again in this video's cards, for a lot more evidence that this isn't just nothing and why he believes it indicates that a Source 2 version of CSGO is incoming. Now, the Nvidia driver update likely happened sometime before March, it's just that it went unannounced and took a while to find. Equally, on March the 1st, it was discovered that Valve had recently set up a TikTok account. Since then, the community has been hyped for every new tidbit of information they can get, and API leaks keep coming, hinting that other stuff is also going to change. Like this one suggesting that Valve has paid money for the Tuscan map, a map I covered just before its release which you'll find in this video's cards here. So presumably, this will be coming to the game at some point as well. On March the 5th, Richard Lewis put his reputation on the line again by writing an article about this, stating that it is likely to be released under the working title of Counter-Strike 2. This project has been a priority for Valve's team, and them being busy with this is probably why I've had so few patch notes to read. The article's anonymous source, or two, says that it's about ready to go, that it's right around the corner, and that the beta's release date is in the month of March and, oh no, April 1st is mentioned again. It even says that a bunch of pro players were flown out to Valve's headquarters in secret to test it. Following this blog post, poor Carrigan was put on the spot and cruelly interrogated about the stuff he either didn't know about or couldn't talk about. Uh, is it because you're so excited about Source 2? I can actually not speak about anything Counter-Strike related. Oh, uh, the, you, you've been to Seattle recently, have you? Either way, we got nothing, which tells us everything. Richard Lewis's article touches upon a couple of other interesting points as well. The first was the mention of 128 tick servers and how they would also be coming to this new Counter-Strike beta. What's curious about this is that over on Twitter, Gabe Follower doesn't think that 128 tick servers are coming, but that it will instead be some kind of new sub-tick system, which he speculates could vary the tick rate depending on what's going on. This doesn't mean that Richard Lewis's 128 tick claim is wrong, for this new system could still be variable but with a maximum cap of 128 updates a second. So they could both be right. Or, a third possibility, they're both wrong. I reached out to somebody else for a third perspective, and they gave me a third option, being that the tickless system might not even be referring to communication between client and server, warning about how much it would break everything if it was referring to that. And then they ended by saying that when this update hits, whatever it is, people will likely be left disappointed. Isn't that the truth? But this third perspective has a good point, because it's a big mistake to expect miracles from a new system. Boarding the hype train feels great, but at some point you have to step off again. But let's throw a caution to the wind for now and assume that we will be getting some magical variable tick rate system. What will this be good for? This is gameplay from CSGO. It looks smooth, but how it's communicated to the game server is anything but. I can enable this information, and this is more like the information that's being sent to and from the server. Each of these is a position and direction the character was looking at a particular moment in time, and information like this is relayed to and from the server 64 times a second, hence 64 tick server. The argument is that 128 tick would be better because then there would be double the number of these. But a variable system would argue that you don't always need 128. How many you need varies depending on the situation, I think. It's all speculation at this point. Because if I'm honest, NetReg is a very complicated topic that I barely understand the basics of. It involves time travel. Yet even I can see the benefits of a variable system. For instance, some newer phone screens already vary their update rate, because you don't need 120 refreshes a second when you're simply reading something on Reddit, or when you're watching a 60fps video on YouTube, like this one. 
so it's far better for your phone to drop to a lower frame rate and to save on battery life. Hell, even your computer's screen may have some kind of variable update feature, because it makes sense to update when it gets new information, instead of just regularly updating 120 times a second or whenever, even when nothing is going on. So likewise, a variable tick rate system in CSGO would vastly cut down on wasted, redundant information, because your teammate AFK in Spawn doesn't need their inactivity reported on 64 or 128 times a second. But those spin botters on the other team, wildly flicking about and killing your chances of winning the game? Their frantic movements may benefit from more than the standard 64 updates a second, and this variable system would allow for this if it has a higher maximum limit, like say, 128. Valve has long been criticised for hosting matchmaking at only 64 ticks a second, with some arguing that 128 tick feels better and more responsive. The argument against this would be the people claiming that players can't feel the difference, and also the extra burden it would put on Valve servers, because 128 updates a second would be double 64. But a variable system? If anything, this could drop the amount of information being sent but with higher temporary peaks when it shoots above the current data rate when a lot is going on. So I can definitely see the benefit from Valve's side of implementing a feature like this. Plus, it would put an end to the whole 64 versus 128 tick debate once and for all, by keeping the best of both worlds. And hopefully it won't destroy the bunny hop and surfing communities while it's at it. Richard Lewis's article also discusses a much improved matchmaking system that is hoped would make the need for third-party pugging services unnecessary. Now I'm going to ask, who hopes this? Valve as a company has historically embraced third parties doing the work for them. Nothing about how this better matchmaking system will be achieved is mentioned in the article, other than the possible 128 tick idea. So the way I see it, if they intend to overhaul the matchmaking system in ways to render services like Faceit obsolete, it will likely require a lot more of Valve's time and effort to maintain such a system moving forward. So I don't really see it as being in Valve's interests to do this nor do I think it helps the communities that have built up around Counter-Strike like Face It. So I wonder if there's any basis behind this claim other than the general idea that players want CSGO's features to be better than they currently are. Sort of like if I claimed Source 2 would make it harder to cheat on, or will improve the graphics in some way. It's easy to make generally good sounding claims like this, but we need specifics if we're to understand how it will achieve these things. So there you go, I'm simply taking away from this that the matchmaking system might be improved. I mean, this video isn't meant for my own speculation, but I do love the idea of having a clan-based ladder separate to the normal matchmaking, because I loved watching our clan rising up the leaderboards back in the days of Enemy Down and Clan Base. Aquarius2 on Twitter highlighted this and asked if it meant the game could be getting a native jump throw bind. What does this mean? Well, I'm guessing it'll be a button that will provide a consistent jump throw timing that will nail pre-lined up grenade throws every time. Currently, the one difference between 64 and 128 tick servers that everybody can agree on is that it changes the behavior of grenades. So it would be nice if Valve devised some way of providing a reliable and consistent grenade throwing method that will work the same no matter which server you're playing on. Even if we don't get a variable tick rate system, this would still be a nice feature to have. And that's about it for now. But things are moving quickly. While you're waiting, check out this video of mine to see how Source 2 could improve the graphics.